Terry from Kombucha Home. Oh my gosh. Basically, it's got a head like a bear. I'm gonna put the sieve in. This is what's in my kitchen at the moment. And I'm gonna get my pickles. I'm just showing you a few combinations. from Kombucha Home and welcome to today's show. I'm going to do a demonstration on making home style dill pickles. And as a woman of Ukrainian descent, my mother is Ukrainian, I grew up having dill pickles very often at my Baba's house and they were absolutely amazing. And um, there's, I'm just for your information, I'm going to show you some store-bought pickles. These are store-bought pickles you can get anywhere. To be honest, I bought this at a big retailer just for the bottle because it was so cheap, I wanted the bottle. So I'm just showing you, this is not in the style that we are making pickles. This is made with vinegar. This is pasteurized. This is dead. What I am making today is live ferment, lacto-fermentation, live pickles. So when you're eating these pickles, not only are you getting amazing taste, but you're actually getting good bacteria in your body. I tell you, once you have these pickles, you'll never go back to those. And um, super easy to make. So in my demonstration, you're going to need some pickles. Now, uh, to start with it, you, you want to get organic pickles. Uh, uh, pardon me, cucumbers, they turn into pickles once they're done. The most important product when you're making the dill pickles is of course the cucumber itself. So most importantly you want organic cucumbers. Now these are rather large. I went to the market today and unfortunately they were all sold out of the smaller pickling small type which I've used in these and I'll show you later. But it's fine, you can get the larger ones, you can chop them up, you can do them like I've done here, but just for display, I'm going, I, I needed to show you something and I will be using these pickles, but if you can find the smaller ones, all the better for you. So organic dill pickles fresh from the market if you can get, or in any store where you can get an organic uh, cucumber. Now, the next things that we're gonna use is, you always wanna use sea salt. So either this is a, a Sicilian salt or any type of sea salt or from the Mediterranean or otherwise. Or again, Himalayan salt. Now I've got already ground one, but I'm just gonna show you so you can see the pink color. So when you're doing it, you want to have any of these types of salt, not regular table salt, don't use that. That's the one thing I would not recommend. And also for the brine, I've already made the brine, just, I was just gonna show you the pot I, I had actually put it in. For the brine, for the brine for the pickles, which is, you're going to put the pickles in, and I'll do a little demonstration, is you've got in this one quart, this is four cups, one quart of spring, either spring water or you want filtered water. You don't want chlorine in your water, it's really important. Okay, so we're gonna start, I've got a few spices here, these are pretty, typical spices for doing your dill pickles. Of course, the Ukrainians and all the Slavic countries love their garlic. So again, this is organic garlic. And um, listen, pay the price, get organic garlic. It's about three or four times more expensive, but really it's worth it. Okay, so to begin, I've got my bottle. My brine has already been made. So I put a quart of water in a pot and I added about, for a quart, about two to three tablespoons of salt. So today I actually use this salt here. I just let it dissolve so it's warm and as you can see it's pretty well room temperature. If it's slightly warm, it's okay. And you're probably wondering what these are. Now these are grape leaves. Grape leaves are high in tannic acid. So if you want crunchy pickles, this is where it's at. If you can get a grape leaf from anywhere, another substitute would be blackberry leaves have tannic leaves, have tannic uh, in the leaves, and also there's horse horseradish leaves that have tannic. I think there's a couple more. You can Google it and find out for yourself. But I have, I have grapes in my yard, so I just went out a couple minutes ago and I picked some grape leaves, I washed them. So I'm gonna start by putting the grape leaves on the bottom and I'm gonna get my pickles and again if you've got the smaller pickling cucumbers it's much better to use than these large cucumbers 
Okay, but they'll work too. So I'm going to just uniformly put them in. Make sure you wash them. And so I'm going to put them in and I'm going to grab some of my garlic. This is about maybe, I think I got maybe about five cloves of garlic here. So I'm going to slip a few cloves in here. And I've got some coriander, which I like. Uh, I don't happen to have mustard seed that works. I'm going to grab, this is from my garden and I just picked it. Some dill. Again, all organic if you can get it. So I'll add a few more cucumbers here. It's, I guess it looks a little nicer if you add the dark part on the outside. Okay. I'm going to add some more grape leaves. You want crunchy pickles, you add those grape leaves. Okay, I'll just keep putting it in here. It's kind of a layering process, super easy to do. Really, it takes no time at all. And I tell you, the taste of these babies is superb. And um, my mother, who's, who had a stroke about five years ago, was up just this last week and um, I showed her my homemade pickles because I haven't made them since last year. I got some fresh, fresh pickles again at the market because it's summertime. I'll put another grape leaf and you should have seen her eyes light up when I gave her one. This is reminiscence of when she grew up. This is the real thing, guys. Super simple. Okay, I am going to add some brine. A little salami here. I figured about a quart was enough. So I'm adding the brine. And I'll, I'll grab a few more. Just stick as many pickles as you can get in. If you've got room at the time at the top, just shove them in with your fingers because every bit of space means another pickle you get to eat. So I can, you know, you can do all kinds of things. Just snap them in, press them in. I've got some more garlic, so I'm gonna work in some more garlic here. Garlic is good. Okay, some more of this. I could have actually added a little bit more. I think this will be fine. So I'll just shove it in with my fingers. Make sure your fingers are clean. Okay, of course, your hands, wash your hands. Okay, I am going to put this in. And you want to submerge everything. Okay, I'm having a, you want to submerge as much as you can with the brine. So I'm gonna put the brine right up to there. Okay, we are ready to ferment. So what I'm going to use is an airlock little device, and we'll be talking about these later on or in another show, and these are amazing. There's actually two ways that you can go forth right now. You can do the old way, and I'll just run over here right now. You can use a coffee filter or you can use a paper towel. You can make sure, you can, if you've got a little piece of glass to keep everything submerged, like a, a nugget of glass. Sometimes you can uh, buy them in the kitchen stores or, um, excuse me, you can always put one of these in with some rocks and put it in to keep it under. But the easiest way, the old way, I did this quite often, put it on the counter for about three to five days. This one here, I fermented about four, four, four days. And you would just set it not in the sun somewhere where it's, nothing is disturbing it. But what I like, and I'm going to show you right now, is the airlock. So what you do at this point is you just put this on. What this does basically is you're fermenting, but you're not getting any bacteria from the air. Just fill this up with water to about there. Because what happens is when it starts to bubble up and you want it to put it somewhere where... When it does, if you're doing the paper towel or the filter on top, that method, you want to put it somewhere where you might have a little bit of leakage because what happens is when the ferment starts, you get a, sometimes you get a little bit of water coming down from the top, so it's a little can be a little bit messy. But these guys, oh my gosh, they are actually amazing. Simple, you just stick in. And as I showed you, it's just a, a four piece thing. I filled it up with water, I cover the lid. And if the water does, arise, does rise up, which it usually does, it starts rising up in here, you simply take it out, rinse it out in the sink and 
fill it back up with water to here and seal it. So what happens is you don't get any mold, bacteria, it's just amazing. Here you go. You might want to burp. This is burping it. You see how air bubbles come? Just, just kind of go along with a knife. This is actually something I should have showed you. I mean, I have missed this method a few times, but it's better if you, you do get the air bubbles out. Okay, I'm using metal, that should be the plastic. I put this back, I'll put a little bit of more liquid, because as you can see, it rose. Okay, we're good to go. I will put, I'll put this, leave this for three to four days, ready to go. You can leave it longer. This is not going to explode like I had my com second kombucha ferment explode. So I'm going to, again, this is a store bar pickle, but I want to show you this is fermented. And as I said, I fermented it about three and a half to four days, but I'm going to get a, a fork here. Now, when you're getting and retrieving your pickles, as much as you can, try to use plastic or wood and not metal when you're doing your lacto fermentation. I'm just going to take a pickle out here and I want you to hear the crunch. Can you hear the crunch? Mm, amazing. Totally amazing. So simple to do. So do it. You'll love it. I tell you, you'll never go back to regular pickles once you once you have have tried these. My kids love them. They ask for them. So when they're in season, I try to do several bottles, like maybe three or four. So try it today.